Hi, welcome to Fiber Chats. My name is Irene. I'm the host here. My guest today is Danielle Giaquinto from Punkwebs. Well, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. I mean, I can't, I couldn't like stop looking at your stuff because it's so unique and so like free and I don't know, just something that you want to zoom in and study, like everything you're doing there. Tell me how it started. Oh, so I started knitting um, my early 20s and I just, I really, I, I wanted to learn but didn't have anybody to teach me. So I started learning from a book from Stitch and Bitch. Um, and everyone I talked to was like, just try knitting, try a scarf first, try a scarf first. And it was the least appealing thing to me. I knew exactly what I wanted to knit. I wanted to knit this like uh, halter dress and uh, nobody would help me do it. <laughs> so I, I ended up like taking it upon myself and just sort of figuring it out it took a really long time. Um, and I just kept thinking, they always talk about how this is supposed to be so relaxing and therapeutic. This is like the most stressful thing. <laughs> um, and then I realized over time with all the trial and error, with all the practicing, I was like, oh, this does get very like meditative and really you, I, you do really find your rhythm and it does feel like you know, very soothing and relaxing. But from there, I um, I got really into textures and I really wanted to just learn how to crack like texture codes just based on looking at them. And then from texture, I went into graphic and um, just like manipulating like larger knit, larger like open knits and um, and have I've been in involved with punk for most of my life. So I was noticing that all the things that they were wearing in the eight seventies and eighties were like things that they likely made themselves. And I was like, oh, I know how to, I can do that. Like looking at it, I was like, I know how to, I, I have an idea of how to do that. And it just kind of all spiraled out from there. Well, tell me the if that makes any sense. <laughs> Tell me about the first finished item that you like. What did you manage to do? The first fin wow. The first finished item. Um, I think the first finished item I managed to do was well, the the halter dress, um, which I, I wish I, I don't even have photos of this one, but it was like a, it was just a I guess that's that's no fun because I can't really remember it. I know the the next finished item that I managed to do was a cable knit skirt, um, and it was for a friend of mine. And it was uh, it was one of the texture things that I became obsessed with. I saw cable knit on something in a store, and I know I didn't take a picture of it because it was pre picture pre having time. like yeah exactly. <laughs> so I, I'm sure like we had the technology, but I didn't. Um, so I don't know how I must have like I, I must have I don't know gotten a picture of it somehow and I just like cracked this like cable code and made this green it was like this like very like limey green cable knit uh skirt with um with a, a waistband in it I made it for a friend of mine and I was so proud of it do you remember like the first crafting that you started doing like were you always crafty before you started to knit was that something you always done yeah yeah I was sewing from like a very young age and my mom was um very very encouraging with it because she when she was younger uh she liked to sew and um so she got me a sewing machine when I was young and um I would I would hand sew like my Barbie dresses at first like my all my doll clothes and stuff and then I went into making like bags for my friends and I like little backpacks and um and outfits like anytime I was going to something like some sort of special occasion I would make my outfit for the occasion and my mom was like always really like excited about it and very proud about it and so that's probably where my love of 
of crafting and clothes like started so i mean it's both both sewing and knitting are part of the slow fashion but yeah. sewing is much faster slow fashion mm-hmm. much <laughs> faster <laughs> does that like ever frustrate you because you have skills to do both like do you ever feel like oh no let me just go back to sewing and like i'll i'll make an outfit in like one evening instead of knitting for a week absolutely um that's definitely a a major frustration. It feels like the difference between like when you're, when you walk everywhere and then you, and you're like, or you're used to riding a bike when you're off your bike, you're like this, I could just get on my bike and get there so much faster. Um, But I'm also just very, very like obsessive. And with, with the sewing, like sewing clothes at a point wasn't enough anymore. I wanted to like learn about textiles and fabric and uh, and knitting was like a good uh, entryway into that. And I was like, I can make my own fabric and then make my own clothes with the fabric I make. And from there, it was like starting to get, you know, I started to get deeper into it. Um, I really wanted to like learn how to spin yarn. I didn't make it that, that far. Um, wanted to like learn how to spin and dye yarn and, and everything. Um, so th- I guess, I guess in my mind, I kind of like created this balance because I had this obsession for like making everything from like scratch to, you know, like the, the need for like speed kind of wore off because I was like, well, this is kind of as fast as I can go if I'm going to make this thing from, from scratch. Well, tell me about the punk web, like what made you decide to turn it into business? Uh, so I was bartending, um, and anytime I worked like a slow or like a day shift, I would just bring my projects to work with me. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like, I I love doing this to kill time. And my customers, first of all, I would have customers come in who were like, oh, are you knitting? Like, I, I've always wanted to try, but it's so frustrating. And I was like, oh, don't I know about the frustrations <laughs> of starting to knit? Let me show you. So I would try to teach some people here and there. And, um, and then people were just like, I would rather just buy things from you. If you I'd, like, this is cool. Thanks for teaching me, but I'd rather like, do you sell? Do you have a, uh, do you have an Etsy? Do you have a website? And um, so it, it kind of started from there where I, I put feelers out with like an Etsy. Um, and then I was like, I can just, you know, I guess I can just like do this myself. If I just set up a website. Well, then talk about like knitting for yourself, right? You can let your artistic like imagination flow, right? Like you can do anything. You can frog it. You can redo it. <laughs> you can make a bigger yeah. hole and smaller hole and whatever. And there is no right or wrong for that. Like it's completely up to whatever you feel like at the moment. When you turn it into a business... There is this point of like, I can make it faster so I sell more. I can make yeah. streamlined so I don't have to think about it. Does that frustrate you at times that you're losing this artistic ability? To do yes, that? definitely. Um, I, I had items like my, um, especially the items that I like kind of like started and founded punk webs on that were, um, they're just... I, I, I wanted to start from the most like simplified in order to be able to make as many and as quickly as possible. Um, and, uh, and I came up with a pattern that I really liked that, that worked for that. And it just got, I just got so burnt out on making the same thing over and over and, and just with like the slightest variations. Um, so to, get past that I tried to I would you know try to make like a seasonal item um but still they always kind of run their course and you just are like oh I don't want to make this again like I'm I'm so tired of making this so I I take breaks I would take like creative breaks where I you know take orders for a little while and once those orders were finished then I would allow myself that would like I would be motivated by like you know this creative break I was going to have, like get all that done. And then in, you know, the time between I can work on something more interesting with more, like more intricate, more detail. And then I would 
get that project done. And after that, I would be kind of burnt out on the intricacies of a project that I was happy to go back to just making the easy, simple, simple thing that and I kind of found that worked for that usually works for me. Right. Well, when when I look at your pieces, they like so carefree sort of like they have this free spirited feel to them, right? Are you a perfectionist yeah. when it comes to your knitting? Like, are you very strict with like what's where and how it's supposed to look? Um, not not exactly. No, like I I had been like really trying to encourage people to I, I like making things with a lot of versatility um because I want people to put their own like interpretation on it I want them to like put their own like creative spin on how they would wear how they would like express themselves in something that I made um which I I found uh was like a little kind of difficult for people like they're buying something from you because they want you to they almost want you to like style them so um so I, I, but I wasn't very, because of that, because I wanted, you know, people to like express themselves in what I need because I had made these pieces with so much versatility. I didn't feel this like perfectionism into like, like for how it, how somebody would wear it. Or I, I will say, I, I just like, I do sweat when I look at, um, you know, people trying something on or with what they're wearing things like, I'm just like, this is, I already can see that this is going to like snag or get ruined, or I can see how this is going to, this isn't going to work. They're not going to have this for very long. Well, let's talk about that because like, to me, part of the negative side of the business, right? Any business is dealing with customer service. Like when people oh start saying like it doesn't fit like I thought it's gonna fit it doesn't look like I thought it's gonna look I washed it in the washing machine and like it's <laughs> for some reason three sizes smaller and that happens to like everyone how do yes. you deal with that how do you like find the so going back to being like a perfectionist um something I am obsessive about is fitting people. So I haven't run into too much of an issue with that when, when a person has finally received their, their item, their piece that they bought, because I will spend as much time as somebody will let me to make it fit them, which is not very sustainable. <laughs> um, so that, that so far hasn't been very much of an issue. If anything, it's, you know, uh, a communication problem where, you know, I'm, discussing sizing with somebody and they don't know how to take a measurement properly or they like misunderstood a measurement. Um, but with like cleaning and washing and, uh, and where I have run into things where, you know, people are like, I, uh, this happened and I have no idea how, and I didn't do anything. I just put it in the washer or, and it's like, I like expressly tell you not to, do that it's like it's hand wash only it's like made by hand um I, and I, I mean I I never I've never gotten to like a blowout or anything with anybody I've, these these are all always internal thoughts um but um I dealing with that for me was I I had made um I made like a a, a really really crappy tutorial video on how to fix a snag um and that was something that I could just like send to somebody who had like a pole in their sweater. And that always seemed to do the job. And then otherwise, um, I had offered repairs on knits that were knits that I maybe didn't even make. Um, so I would extend that to any customer who, who bought something from me. I would just like repair anything for free. if They covered shipping. Um and I haven't had to fix many things, which I think is also uh, partly uh, due to, to the aesthetic that I kind of um, appeal to, which is, which is very distressed. And so I think, I think some of these things might happen and it's like almost a bonus. Like, cause I, one thing I remember somebody saying to me was like, oh, I kind of thought it was going to be 
Uh, my sweater was going to be more like the one I saw you wearing this time. It's like yours was like more shredded. And I was like, yeah, because I worn it for years. <laughs> I don't make them look like that. You do that yourself by wearing them. And they're like, oh. Um, What's your vision for your business? Like, are you couture designer? Are you like mass market designer? Like, where do you see yourself? Definitely more couture, definitely more, um, definitely not mass market. Um, I almost considered trying to figure out how to do that just like with in conversations with people, with like friends who have like design connections or, or are designers. And that just wasn't for me. Like I just, I like creating new and different things all the time. And I, and I like it being, I like, what I make being limited to what I am able to make by hand and that they're going to be different. Each piece is going to be slightly different every time or, or drastically different every time. Um, so I, I did, and then I did get more into, to making, um, I started making like really detailed, um, more, I would more like your, like more couture pieces where it's like this, isn't like your everyday practical where this is like uh you know runway this is more like high fashion um that's and and that felt right that felt good to me i like making things like that more interesting who is your audience who do you have in mind when you create your things like are you ever surprised oh. by people who buy your things sometimes yeah i feel like my you know, I don't have like a I don't necessarily have like a very intended target audience but because I, I going back to like being involved in the punk community um there's so many crafters within the community and we're all like we all are connected to each other I feel like those are the people that I just easily reach um the most um but I have I have had like orders I, I was surprised by and it's usually it'll usually be a mom who's buying something for their son or daughter um I don't think anything beyond that I don't think I don't think I think I think most of the people who buy from me it's like pretty pretty obvious that it's like for them and um but yeah so mostly mostly like punk goth subculture different art like creative types of people um are my... wear your stuff <laughs> oh oh my god i would love for you to wear my things i'd love for anybody who feels like they want to wear my things to wear them you know you know when you like i just i just want i want like it to be out there and and for like people to wear it and feel good and feel like excited I've done like a couple of um, shoots. I've been like invited on some shoots and styling people is so fun. I didn't realize how like empowering it could be. And the most fun, like, I feel like that's the funnest part is like having somebody try something of yours that you make on and be like, wow, this makes me like, I love this. I just want to like leave in this. This makes me feel good. So good. So that became like, the like a styling technique is when dressing somebody to be like how do you feel in this do you feel good in this what would make you feel good wearing this mm -hmm. or would you feel better wearing something else or how would you feel better wearing this and um and, and i just love that for anybody anybody to like put something on for them to like try it on and be like i love this makes me feel good i, I love how i look in this how much of your personal wardrobe is made by you <laughs> kind of a lot um I don't think that a day goes by that I don't wear a knit um because my wardrobe otherwise is like very basic oh here she comes she's gonna make an appearance um just wear like stretchy black clothes otherwise and it's very boring and I do like to be expressive so it's just the easiest thing for me to do is pull from my own rack of knits and just put on like one thing and it adds like a ton of color and character so 
I'd say a lot of my wardrobe, but it, it's gotten like, it's beyond just like, you know, this one accessory piece. It's like, I, I make like socks. And so I feel like a lot of my wardrobe is made by me. <laughs> I mean, do you have like one particular piece that you would never sell? Doesn't matter what, like it's yours for the keeping. Uh, you know, I, I felt that for a few of my pieces. And now I think over time, I'm more willing to part with them. Um, but yeah, I, I can think of, uh, I can think of one. Um, I made this, like I was making these like kimono style cardigan sweaters. Um, and I started making them because I, you know, I, I made a few and, and it was because I was trying to figure out a way to like simplify and like sort of streamline them in order to sell. And, um, the first one I made was like way too involved and intricate down to like, I hand made these like belts from ribbon um, that like, there's like six belts made from ribbon attached to it. And I was like, okay, this is just never, this is not, I can't even sell this piece. There's no way I'm going to be able to reproduce this. Um, so I tried to like scale it back a little and make like a simpler version with like more affordable yarn, lighter weight, because it was also super heavy. I didn't realize like how heavy it was going to be. And I just, the the second one I made, I like fell in love with. And it's like a piece that I wear all the time and, and have for like the past like few years. I was wearing it like, I think just before, before coming on here. Um, and it's not even that, it's not like that crazy or that interesting, but it's just this like army green, um kimono style cardigan that has like a, a band image on the back and it's just drapey tell me about your yarn stash how do you buy yarn like what goes into that decision making that was oh sourcing yarn was really tricky because when i was sort just like buying yarn for myself was not so complicated i i like buying i like you know, walking through thrift stores and yard sales and finding really interesting secondhand yarn. And to me, that was like, you know, it's sustainable and um, just, uh, and just more interesting. Like I, I like, I like working from finds like that. I feel like going yarn shopping for me wasn't natural. Like it's, there's just way too many options. I feel more creative when I'm limited so to speak to like the things I find the the this different things I would find inspired me to put you know put different yarn together in a way that I wouldn't otherwise have thought to if I had them just like laid out in front of me in a yarn store so that worked for me for a long time until you know starting the business I realized like I needed something more I needed to like I needed more consistency and I needed to be able to rely on the same product um and that made it really hard to source yarn because i've i i'm vegan i consider myself vegan and my product to be cruelty free and vegan which also i guess thinking back to you know uh my my audience uh, a, a lot of other people who follow me whether they're into what i do aesthetically specifically or not they're there are a lot of times into what I'm doing because I promise a vegan product or I promise like a cruelty free product. So that made it a little bit more complicated because what one person considers to be vegan or cruelty free might be different to another. So trying to source yarn uh, was really, really difficult. And I knew I needed to, um, I, I knew I needed to like buy wholesale um, and I was able to, there are so many new companies now that are really focused on sustainability, sustainability and um, are aware of, you know, like um, plant-based things that are more plant-based. Um, so I was using um, companies specifically like who, who offered those things mm -hmm. Um but it, 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 it's expensive, so. Well, when you told me that you like like to teach some people in your bar how to knit, have you yeah. ever considered going into teaching? And is it possible to teach people to do what you do? 
So I have considered this a lot um, because I really enjoy doing it. um, But I am, I'm not classically taught or trained. um, And I don't really knit in the most conventional way. A lot of like the things that people would want to learn from me. I, um, it's not that I don't feel comfortable teaching them. It just, I have like such uh, an assortment of tools for making like an individual piece down to like uh, tools that I've had to make and modify myself. Just like, like circular needles, really, really like large circular needles with like a short wire um, or a short cable um, to make uh, whole sleeves but really loose knit. So I, I I just find it hard to be able to teach somebody without them with them not being able to access all my tools. Right. And that's kind do, of you think, me. do you think it's possible to write a pattern? Oh <laughs> that one, um I have tried um I've tried a lot because I, I do know how to read a pattern. I know how to read from a pattern. And again, it like comes down to not doing things in the most conventional way it means it's like even harder to explain and describe your process. So, um, but I have done it f- before for friends um, who like I've like drawn diagrams for and it's just so like wrote the pattern and then drew the diagram the diagrams out just to like you know because it feels like the pattern just isn't going to make enough sense on its own and uh it's just so much more work that I'm than I'm willing to do if I had like help or guidance in that area it's just also not very much of a like not enough of an interest of mine like I'll I'll start doing something like that I'll feel like motivated to do it and then I'll be like man I just really want to knit right now though I don't want to be bothered with writing this pattern anymore that's like absolutely my problem because like every time I'm doing something and it could be written into the pattern because it's like I'm not following anything I'm just playing this yarn yeah people will be like oh you should publish it and I'm like I don't even remember what I did there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I rather need something else, something new. Yeah. I want to make a, something different now. Like I'm done with that. Yeah. I feel like that too. And I, I have had to keep notes. Like I do try to keep somewhat detailed notes on things I'm working on because a lot of the things I make also, like I'm just kind of, I'm just going with different feelings and, Oh, that looks cool. I should, like now I should add this type of collar to it but it wasn't always like the plan or there wasn't like an, a detailed plan written out for it in the first place and then what I'll be like oh I really like how that came out I want to like try to like reproduce that and I would like think while I was making something like oh, I'll remember if I'll remember what I did it's not like I need to write this down I'll, I'll make it and then I can make it again and when I would like come to you know try to reproduce something I was like I don't the hell did what did I do like I don't remember so I have I started keeping notes I wish I wish somebody could like make sense of my note gibberish because if I could sell that as a pattern I've got plenty but but yeah I'm just what inspires you like where you get your ideas um that's a good question um because I yeah, that's a very good question. I guess mostly from just like punk aesthetic, like you'll you'll be listening, I'll be listening to records and you'll look at like the flip the record over on the back of the record, there's like pictures of the bands and you'll like just I'll just be uh I can like spot a knit from you know nowhere. I can just like I'll you'll I'll see like this like group shot of a band and they're all wearing like layers and layers of things with jackets over them. And I'll be like, Whoa, look at that little, that that's a knit, like that sweater, that like cool fishnet thing under there. Like, I wonder what that is. And then I'll look. So a lot of times you could like find more pictures from those sets and I'll be like, that it wasn't it. That looks like their grandma made them that. 
Um, so I take a lot of inspiration from that, that, that would, that being like the most like literal, actual, like, you know, knit things I see. And then other than that, just like general, general fashion. Like if I do encounter like interesting runway, high fashion stuff, I'll be like, Ooh, that makes me think of like a shape I would love to like explore. Like I have a friend, she mm-hmm. is the like, complete opposite of me. And she actually was the one who inspired me to learn how to knit because she's, like I always would come visit her and I would see her knits and it was like totally mind blowing to me. So at some point I was like, maybe I want to try to do that. But her style is completely different from my style. She just takes any yarn and we're talking the craziest kind of yarns you can find on the market. And somehow she turns it into some like, amazing masterpieces that's always one of a time of a kind there is not like she cannot even repeat what she's doing and at some point when i start doing shetland lace i use the hashtag wearable art and to mock me she started using the hashtag unwearable art for all (laughs) her things what do you think gives you this freedom and ability to just see something in your head and created in design because like there's so many people like me right who need to follow a pattern who need to have some sort of like shape to it some sort of like functionality let's say and then you come and you have this like fierce just ability to to create something out of your head like what sets you apart and my friend from the rest of the meters Hmm. That's, I think that like, for me, it goes back to the, 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 like passion to like make my own clothes as like a kid. I just, because I, I like started doing that with sewing, um, that like definitely, you know, like fed into my knitting too, where I was like, oh, okay, I want to like, I'm just going to try. I'm just gonna, I'll just give it a go and see if it works out. And, you know, you know, as you know, like it's way more time consuming. So at times it would feel like, all right, am I going to just like invest hours upon hours into this? And then I'm going to regret it because if, if it doesn't work out and it just always for me is like, uh, that's never the issue because even if it doesn't work out to be my initial idea or it just didn't work, doesn't always just work out the first time. It always feels like, um, I got my, my practice in I've I like got my meditation and I got my like I got some I always am getting something out of it so when and I at least tried and I you know learned something I'm taking something from it either way like it I learned that that what isn't going to work or it's not worth it to try to like pursue that type of design and and it just leads me into another idea it le- they always lead me into like several other ideas i'll be like working on something and i'll be like oh i have an idea for this other thing i want to make after this which oftentimes turns into just like starting several different projects at the same time um but yeah i, I think just feeling very uh inspired and motivated in the moment do you ever get times when there's like zero ideas and you're just not inspired and don't know what to make next? Yeah. Um, not very often, but I do. Um, and for that, I, I always keep, um, I always keep ideas in my notes. So it doesn't last very long. I'll be like, Oh yeah, let me just, I'll like, usually I have something just very much like in mind that I just like can't get out of my head. And I, I'd say the other times, those moments where I feel like I don't have any ideas, like my head is kind of clear of any ideas. That's when I'll like consult like my notes and be like, Oh yeah, I forgot. I had this idea. I want to like, I got to do that. I is, it try hard, that. is it hard to stop? Like when you working on the project, because there is no, you're not following a pattern, right? You can keep adding and keep adding and keep yeah additions to that. Is it hard for you to like say, okay, this is done? Yeah, yes. It's hard. Yeah, definitely. Um, but for that, I've like tried to train myself to put something down for a little bit and walk away 
so that I can like approach it with fresh eyes and see if it does need more or um so I kind of I I've kind of forced myself to stop but like mostly uh, mostly like for um time purposes like all right I've been sitting here I've been working on this piece for like 13 hours today um maybe it's time to put that down and go do something else and and see see if it's still saying the same thing to me tomorrow and I'll I'll like leave a note of if you know if I did have an idea of something I wanted to like keep working on I'll like write it I'll write it in my notes to like come back to and I'll come back to it and be like oh this is um I don't need to do this or like actually I have this idea so are you like seriously knitting for 13 hours a day not all the time yeah. definitely I definitely don't have 13 hours a day every day to do that but when I get an idea in my head yeah I will sit there and I will like to the point I'll like not stop to the point of like forcing breaks on myself like oh I really should eat something and use the bathroom and like I have to force myself or I should really leave the house and like talk to another human being um because I, I'll even I'll have plans and I'll be like okay like up until this time I can work on this and then I'll go and like meet up with my friends and I'll then I'll like you know, see the, see the time at some point and be like, oh, hey, sorry, guys, I'm just like not at a good stopping point in this thing that I'm working on. And I think that I, you know, feel like stopping points to say stopping point to like a knitter, everybody knows what that is, or to like a friend or a loved one of a knitter, anybody else that would just like, they'd be like, what? <laughs> but my friends definitely know what a stopping point is. Like, well, oh. my, my daughter bought me a bag saying one more row. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my partner definitely knows that one. Just like, oh, okay, I'm almost there. Just like, I'm almost at a good stopping point. Just one, maybe two more rows. And he's like, yeah, okay. Well, sure. tell me about your friends, like, or your family in general, like. Do they think you crazy? Do they think you are obsessed with the knitting, or do they think you like on your way? Is it? Is it <laughs> <working>? <laughs> um, I think uh, there. Well, they're very, very, very supportive. All like my friends and my family are very supportive, very like interested in what I'm doing, very proud. Um, but uh, and they are aware that I'm obsessed. It's like comes up in conversation more than anything else um uh, and and has i don't know if they think i'm on my way because i don't know if i think i'm on my way to anything you are definitely on your way oh thank you <laughs> um but i i would say like i'm sure if like talking to them like i said because they're so encouraging i do think that they you know they're they're always hoping for me that i'm on to something bigger and better and brighter um so I am really lucky for that like there's I've never been met with like you know an eye roll or you know my friends ask me about what I'm doing with my knitting a lot of the time so it feels really good right I mean I get eye rolls sometimes and I get like <laughs> do you ever sleep kind of <laughs> reaction from, from people I know you know Oh yeah, I mean I would say I'm sure you know when I'm when I'm like delaying things because I'm not at a, the ideal stopping point. I'm sure there's some eye rolls there. <laughs> but in terms of like updates on what I'm doing generally see, well received. I see like an exhibition in the museum with all your things in there. Oh, yes. What's your I would love that. <laughs> I so I've wanted to do so just before the pandemic, um, a friend of mine uh, and I were putting together uh, like a kind of uh, textile art show where we just wanted to get like several different artists together from our community, from like the punk community all around the world um, and put together this show of like how people, different people interpret textiles, what they mean to them and like how they use them, whether it be for like clothing or for what have you for banners and what and whatnot 
um, we had like a venue secured and everything. It was to be in April of 2020 and that just obviously couldn't happen. And um, she had collected a lot of the art for the show and had to send it back. And we were both individually working on pieces for that show that I still have. Um, I have this one piece that my dad made me a uh, plexiglass or I don't even know, acrylic frame for so you could like see through to the other side. Um, yeah, it was really cool. And, and again, like so supportive of him to do that. Um, and that show never happened. And it's still like in the back of my mind, like, oh, one of the one day, like maybe we can like get this show up and running again. But even or like even if we have to like, uh, you know, adjust it to be a different type of show. And then I'm also just always thinking like I just want to do any kind of show like ever like I just want to do a show again no, um, I, I totally see it's coming your way because oh. I mean, it's like it, it just like it if it's my vision just from talking to you for a little bit it oh. must be your vision as well well thank you that's encouraging like I really hope I'm I am motivated to do to hopefully do something I'm pretty pregnant right now so I'm just like you know, a lot of my thought is how I'm going to be like welcoming my baby, but I'm just like, I hope, hope I can like, you know, multitask and is make a show happen. Dressed, is your baby going to be dressed in all the punk web clothes? <laughs> yes. I've already, I've already made her a sweater. So, or at least started one. I, I only have the sleeves left and I often, when I start a project, that's like pretty detailed. I get to the point of like putting the sleeves on and I'm like, Oh, I need a break. So it's very, very typical to still not have sleeves on this sweater, but I have already made her something. Well, um, maybe she'll encourage you to do the whole new children's line. That would be cool. Yeah. That's like, that would be really cool too. And I have, you know, a lot of friends who have kids and I've actually made sweaters for some of my friends kids and for my nephew um and those have always been like you know motivating me to like try to make things because people would ask me all the time like can you make something like I want something for me but I also want something for like maybe you can make a matching sweater for my kid or right. um and I was just like oh man I, I I don't know if I have it in me to like figure out si these different sizings of of this or I don't I don't I'm not as familiar with kids sizing or baby sizing and now I'm just like well I'm gonna be around it a lot and I'll have You're a gonna be very familiar. <laughs> yeah I'll be way more familiar so I was like well it could happen it was the same thing with um people would always ask me for like dog sweaters or like pet clothes and stuff and um and I was like yeah that would be cool I just don't you know I don't have a dog so I don't have anybody to like kind of practice on or make things for and uh I got my we, we we got our dog in January and I was immediately making her sweaters <laughs> and she had like several sweat like three uh, three versions of the same sweater because I was like coming trying to like come up with the sizing the best sizing for her and uh and then afterwards everybody was like okay so you're gonna start doing that now and I was like yeah I can see I think I'm yeah, I'll probably start doing that. So I was like, okay, pup webs. And um, I forget what I baby, had for baby webs, baby and baby webs. Like that's perfect. <laughs> so. well, I, I wish you the very best of luck with your child, with your puppy and with your business. And Thank I'm you sure so I'll much. see a lot of you around. Like I'm sure I'll see you at some fashion show and maybe even oh. <laughs> that's uh that's so kind of you to say and thank you for having me and and I have to thank Anneli for introducing us too because she's always been very supportive of what I've been doing she's always also said like you're gonna you're gonna be you know you're gonna make like fashion you're gonna like be up there yeah so. she knows she's the final <laughs> star so she knows she is <laughs> thanks so much Danielle thank you for being my guest today oh thank you so much
Thank you.